Thanks very much for turning up tonight to this meeting to defend victimized reps. We've got a growing number of reps fighting back from victimization and not simply taking it. I want to ask their employers why they are so different. We have thousands of workplace reps. And during the course of this year, there have been many, many thousand member rep management interactions, which good heads, good management, welcome. They make schools safer, they make schools better places to work in, and the vast, vast majority of rep man management interactions are seen in this spirit. So what is it that is so peculiar about these different employers here who are behaving in this way? If they see a problem, why don't they come and talk to us? Our reps are experts. They want to talk. They want to solve problems. That's what our union does. But we have to say, if they are going down these disciplinary routes, then our reps get every bit of support the union can offer them. Whether that is looking for the best legal cases, because it's illegal to discriminate against a trades union rep, or whether it's balloting for uh, sustained strike action at a school, or whether it's speaking out to condemn these employers and to encourage other people to sign petitions, the union will do everything in its power to support these people. I got sacked recently due to trade union victimisation. My school is an alternative provision. Alternative provisions are schools for students that are frequently excluded from mainstream school, but also have a specific characteristic. So in my school, that means they have autism or they have SEMH. My school is run by a group called the Kettleston Group and they have several schools across the country. This is a private organisation that charges about £55,000 per student. And we felt like the quality of education was not high enough from our employer. The building wasn't up to scratch. They weren't paying teacher pay scales. They weren't giving the students the necessary support. The whole staff was really passionate about it. Within the course of like less than a year, our union membership went from eight to 48. We went to the senior leadership team and we're like, here is a list of things that we'd like to see changed. After we officially did it through the union and threatened strike action, they started to take us seriously. We did get some wins early on. One significant win was that they started using cover teachers. The cover teacher thing was actually significant because in March 2020, our school said that they wouldn't pay us sick pay if we had COVID and also wouldn't cover us. But we challenged that as a collective and that changed. But the other things that we wanted to do were to become in line with mainstream schools. Teacher standards, pay progression, pay scales, sick pay. And the management of the school, they just refused to do that. We ended up taking strike action. After the strike action, they decided to start victimising and sacking us. And that's when I lost my job. But because of that now, and um, we're on to day 14 of strike action. And the union has actually now just approved an extra 10 days of strike action, which is two days a week of next half term until I get reinstated. I had targeted redundancy for use in Section 44 because I was basically a pain in the neck um, for my employers over the last year in terms of health and safety concerns. I was given my notes of redundancy on the day that I invoked Section 44. Tracy works at a school where a few years ago, Ofsted said attendance was a really big problem. Tracy's been employed as the attendance officer at that school, and Ofsted now says that attendance is sorted out. And we think that's Tracy's work at the school. And yet somehow her role has been identified for redundancy. The 13th of December is when I became a rep. At the start of the school term, NEU members were faced with the prospect of returning to educate remotely from the school premises. Our head teacher also intended to bring in 120 BTEC students for face-to-face -face revision lessons. Oaks Park is a large school of over 1,800 students and a staff that totals over 250 people, maybe more. During this time, my girlfriend was actually in her third trimester of pregnancy, critically vulnerable or critically extremely vulnerable. So going into work in a building with 250, maybe 300 people plus, in a borough that was the epicenter of coronavirus at the time it was filling me with anxiety and we had three members one pregnant one had an autoimmune disease uh, and another uh, who was just concerned about taking three different modes of public transport to get into work all three were met with well school safe i want you in so it was then that we got advice from the regional reps 
that we could use Section 44. And of the 100 members of the NEU at Oaks Park, 25 decided to use and invoke Section 44. What followed, I can only describe as a campaign of intimidation and aggression. Members were reporting many, many phone calls while they were online teaching at home, saying like, you are in breach of contract. We are considering this to be an unauthorised absence. We held firm. The region agreed to be balloted for strike action in support of Oaks Park. And as far as we were concerned, that was the end of it. We were able to wipe from home. However, this wasn't the end of it. I have the threat of a summary dismissal. On top of that, three other members will not be working at the school come September. Uh, and their contracts have been terminated. Those three members also use Section 44. I had my teaching practice challenged along the lines of, I'm not doing my job properly. I'm not getting this work done. I have been a teacher for 10 years. I've been a middle leader for at least seven of those. I've been a head of year. I've been a head of department. I've never had my teaching practice challenged in the way it's been challenged in the last month. I was then asked to come into a, to a meeting uh, a line management meeting, but they insisted it was done face to face. Bearing in mind we were still in a national lockdown. At this point, my girlfriend was still in her third trimester. And by the end of that meeting, this SLT manager sent me an uh, email to uh, question whether or not I was able to continue with my TLR role. And I should take a long, hard look about whether I should continue. I am scared. I'm worried. My child has now been born. He is three weeks old. Not only has my uh, child being put under danger when during section 44 but now the, the the food is being taken from that person's mouth with this threat i went through a similar situation where you know i was becoming a father for me my own victimization started off when i reported an incident of racism and after that point it seems that there was a secret file being kept on me which i didn't know about and has now resulted in accusations of my own performance and falsifications. And, and now I'm on a final written warning. And that is a management strategy at trying to stop myself and other union reps from speaking out and being strong. But we won't let you get away with it. Our members are strong with us and they're strong with us because we have built that as reps. You come after one of us, okay? And we'll stand together and we'll stop you. I was blacklisted uh, when I was 25 in 1978. Walked onto a building site, uh, Taylor Woodrow, and we went around trying to organise the site. I didn't understand there was a, a blacklist across the industry of construction. I found out to my cost when I struggled to get other work. I spent 12 years experiencing this and the damage this does to you psychologically, you don't realise it at the time. It was actually the companies conspiring and uh, being helped by the police. They infiltrated UCAT, the rank and file groups that I was a member of. One particular time I went for a Gleason's job. The foreman gave me the job. He said, just wait there, we just got to check you out. He came back half an hour later and said, sorry, boy, I won't let you start. He says, your name don't check out. I got active in the Labour Party and became a councillor. And Gleason's, who had refused me work, uh, came to renew their uh, contract and uh, we refused them. So they blacklisted me and I blacklisted them back. What unions need to do is the need to be brave and the need to step up and the need to defend the members. We've been defending our members and our communities and we will continue to stick together and we will continue to work with other unions and stand together with other reps that have been victimised. I have no idea why management has attack me. Maybe that's two of the facts that have made their mind up somewhere down the line. I'm from an Irish background. There's been loads of anti-Irish racism spread through Facebook, social media. My wife has suffered uh, online abuse. I've had certain people making homophobic videos about one of the reps that's uh, very much on my side. The mental pressure, the mental stress, not knowing where the next dinner's coming from, not knowing when I'm going to get my job back. They're playing with people's lives, and they know that and they revel in it. And it's up to us as trade unionists and as working class people to send out a message that we're not willing to, to accept us. We've had a four-week ballot on the central line. We're more than confident we're going to smash all the thresholds. I was dismissed by my employer on the 26th of February. This all revolves around the, the striking of a railway bridge by one of our buses in late October. 
I was informed about it as the RMT rep by the driver. He tried to follow what the law says he should do, which is reporting it to the company and then to network rail. It was only a small collision. However, small collisions can end in shifting a ballast on the roof, for example, the bending of rails, there could be derailments and there could be bridge collapses. The driver was told to take the bus back to, to the city centre. There was no report to network rail. I was told there was no bridge strike. It didn't happen. I went back to the driver who confirmed 100%. He did hit that bridge. I then informed the company I would make the necessary report to network rail so the bridge could have the necessary structural integrity checks and, and everything else. Network Rail contacted the company uh, and an investigation started. Throughout that investigation, the management team lied throughout. It had never been struck. No one had ever reported it before. We found 14 other drivers who said they'd reported the same incident with the same bus with the same bridge. It turns out the bus sat a little bit higher than the others. After that, I was dismissed for four different reasons. Bringing the company into disrepute. I had made a false and malicious telephone call to Network Rail. I had affected their ability to attract new commercial business. And the last reason has been my call to Network Rail could have lost their operator's license. Other reps have been threatened as well. We are now balloting for strike action. While I was dismissed, a driver approached me to say that he had a wheel hub fire while driving a bus. He extinguished that fire using an onboard fire extinguisher. The following day, he was brought in for the investigation. He was told by the managers the fire did not happen. He was then threatened and intimidated not to say anything. So many people who've spoken here tonight are, in, are, are being victimised because they've raised safety concerns, whether that's the construction industry, whether that's the transport industry like yourselves, or whether that's the spread of COVID through schools. It's, it's safety that people are being picked on for. The profit motive is the main driving force for all of this. And it's, um, to me, it's exactly why we are being targeted. Um, profit is under threat because of health and safety. I fully see these attacks on trade union representatives as a, a clearing of the ground by these employers. I think they're looking at the reps who are in place, the people who will cause them uh, a bit of an obstacle. I think we need to go cross trade union. We in the RMT will stand shoulder to shoulder with every rep in any union that's being attacked. This bullying and harassment, to be honest, has been going on for a long time been going on for a long time in a lot of our workplaces and what's happening now is we're not we're not tolerating it they've used the pandemic to go for us and we we have decided and said very clearly we're not tolerating it we will not be silenced Kirsty's a rep at a school who wrote on a union blog a criticism of the use of the lateral flow tests as an alternative to close contact isolation absolutely right to raise that question but has had a charge of gross misconduct laid against her. Members in my school have voted to go on strike, but with a very, very heavy heart. What teacher or support staff would want to shut a school after everything our students have been through? But again, we won't be intimidated, and the ball is always in their court. They cause the problem by not looking after our health and safety. They cause the problem by cutting corners. They are the ones that need to look into their hearts and souls and ask, is this the right way to treat other human beings? And I would say no. We're not going away. We're tenacious, we're determined, we're meticulous, we're caring, and we look after each other. Solidarity forever. If your rep's being victimised, behave like it's you. Because it is you. And not only in your workplace behave like it's you, but in the whole union, behave like it's you. If the rep goes, you're all in trouble. And if enough reps go, the whole union's in trouble. So just as you'd say COVID, behave as if you've got it. Victimised reps, behave like it's all of us and stay part of this campaign.